Look at that. <laughs> okay. So client wants to know how much it's going to cost and you want to know, do they have enough budget for me? Right. And ask yourself this question right now. How often have I gotten on the call and I was afraid to talk about the budget? <clears throat> or when the clients asked me about the budget, I hemmed and hauled and I was like unsure and I went through a lengthy explanation. Mm. Did that help me to build trust? Did that help me to create rapport? Will this client like me because I'm so awkwardly uncomfortable talking about money? So it's actually unprofessional for you not to talk about money. And this is going to be a, like a brain meltdown for some of you because you thought like, oh, I just want to talk about the art and the design. And I thought talking about the money is really crass and rude and it devalues my work as a creative human and a spirit in the world. And actually, actually, what's happening here is you're creating the sense within the client's mind that you don't know how to run a business, that you're uncomfortable talking about business. Everybody needs to know a price point. Imagine if you went to the supermarket or the electronic store. <laughs> you're like, how much is that? Well, kind of, uh, yeah, uh, well, what day is today? Yeah, you know how much work was put into this packaging. No, no, how much is that? I mean, your, your, your patience on that, it's going to be like this and you're out. It's right. like, this person is trying to sell me something. I don't trust this person. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep going on here. When we looked at trust, trust is a little bit more complicated to build. So naturally, when we asked the group, what builds trust? We made these kind of connections. Oh, look at that animation. Yeah, yeah this is a new animation feature, Matthew. Right. It's pretty nice. So in order for a client to have trust, they need to, uh, you need to ask them what are their goals. Right. You need to ask them what are some of their ambitions and challenges, what's getting in the way of get, mm -hmm. get achieving those goals. What are their pain points? And um, trying to keep them engaged in the call. Right. So if you're doing your job properly, you're asking solid questions and mm -hmm. you're trying to... And you're listening. And you're listening mm -hmm. and you're giving them what they want, essentially. Then mm -hmm. you're starting to build real trust with them. That's right. Right. So clients will feel like, oh, you know what? They, they understand me. They understand my business. Or they're just giving me exactly what they, they want. That guy's a straight shooter. He just gave me the price for the logo. I know exactly what I'm getting. I know the steps. Regardless of what tier you're on, if you're on the really upper echelon or if you're the hire me and let's do this right now. Yeah. Right? That totally works. And it depends on the size of the client and what they need. Mm -hmm. So if they're ready to go and they're ready to sign a check for a very simple scope, you should say, yes, let's do it. That's the right price and let's rock and roll. Don't sit there and try to prolong the process. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we know when we're at a party, and you know this, you've been at a party before and somebody comes up to you, they start talking to you and what happens? They just go on and on and on and on. And you're like, whoa, I'm looking for the escape. I'm trying to look for, I'm looking for somebody to save me. So I'm like, hey, Mary, uh, hey, I got to go talk to my friend. So the last thing you want to be is that person who keeps talking, who has no sense of what the other person is feeling or thinking about. You cannot read other people. You're kind of emotionally like not there. All right. You don't want to do that. Okay, let's go back to the deck. Do I like you? Do I like you? Well, I will like you if we build rapport. So what is rapport, Chris? Because some people don't know what that word means. Okay. Rapport is, do we believe in the same kinds of thing? Mm -hmm. Do we have the same values and belief systems? Do we want the same things? Do we connect on so many different levels? And there's a great video, and I'll include it in the link below at some point in the description notes, on this great video from... Tony Robbins on how to build rapport. We need to match and mirror the other person because we like people who are like us or who we'd like mm -hmm. to be more like. So if we see somebody that is a designer, we have instant rapport. If they're in the same field of design, if they're in the same city, if they have the same background, if they speak in similar ways. So those are ways that you build rapport. So you're trying to find commonality. Okay. You're trying to find that middle ground or that bridge to connect their world and your world. So it helps here when you're older, when you have more experiences, when you're more traveled and you have different cultural influences because there's a good chance you can tie into something that's there. And that's why I love talking to people because I want to learn about them and I'm listening for something where I'm like, oh, I can relate to that. Okay, you ever have a friend describe to you a dish that you've never had before? Let's say if you've never had fusion food, like say Korean Mexican food, like a kalbi what is that called? Kobe pork taco, something like that. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Matthew? Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah. Let's say you've never had that before. So you're trying to describe to somebody else who's never had that before. Well, we know what tortillas taste like and they're not quite sure. So you might say, well, there's kimchi and that's kind of spicy and sour, kind of like a really spicy pickle, maybe. 
right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's Napa cabbage. And you kind of, so you're trying to find that thing that the common ground to build a bridge between what they know and what you know and find that commonality. That's what you're trying to do. Right. Okay. All right. Does that help? It helps. All right. Uh, before I go on with the rest of the deck, uh, I think we're about 22, 25 minutes in here. Mm-hmm. Do we have any questions we need to answer? Aaron? Yes. Okay. Aaron, get your question ready in case you see something. You can either ask a question for yourself or on behalf of the group. But Matthew, go ahead. Okay. So Derek Elliott asks, how soon do you talk about the price? Once you get on the call and you do the pleasantries, hello, how early do you talk about the price Mm. on that call okay that's a very good question what's the person's name Derek Elliott Derek here here's my quick answer to this it depends on how often you're finding that there's a mismatch between what the clients can afford to spend and what you charge as a minimum level of engagement so if you're getting a lot of calls where they're coming in at two four hundred dollars and you're at two thousand dollars I would bring up the conversation about price right away almost mm-hmm. immediately okay mm-hmm. and if that's not happening too much I wouldn't worry about it that means that your positioning and where you're creating leads from is aligned to your brand. So if people are finding you on 99designs or Fiverr or on Craigslist, there's a great chance that they cannot afford what it is that you do it's because you're fishing in the wrong pond. If you want to catch a big fish, you got to go to the deep ocean. You can't fish in the small pond. So if you're getting a lot of clients like that, look at where you're building leads from. Look at your website. Look at the work that you do. And is it Similar enough to companies that do what you want to do that charge the amount of monies that you want. So it's very easy. I think in 2018, as we're drawing to uh, close towards the end of the year here, it's very easy to reverse engineer what other people are doing, how they set up their things, how they're talking to the client, their tone and the messaging, the value proposition, what benefits they're providing and say to yourself, I really like what they do. I imagine that these are the clients that they're getting and therefore the prices that they're commanding. Look at that and look at your work and close the gap. Just close the gap. That's all you need to do. Okay? Sweet. All right. So that's an easy one. Matthew, you have a more difficult one or another easy one? There are several questions about pricing, and let me try and ask these in order so that we could tackle them in in a good way. 